Module 4, Part 2, Writing Your Farm Food Safety Plan, Answering Audit Farm Review Questions. Farm Review. This is one of six audit protocols under the USDA GAP GMP audits. A past general question section required in one other section, example, Farm Review, will classify a farm as GAP certified. 80% of the points awarded for questions not marked as NA is a passing score. There are seven major areas, water usage, water quality risk, sewage treatment, animals, wildlife, and livestock, manure, and municipal biosolids, soil, and traceability. Water usage. These questions are self-explanatory. Use complete sentences when answering. Example, we use a pond for irrigation water. We use municipal water for irrigating our greenhouse. Many growers do not irrigate their crops. A sentence saying, we do not irrigate our crops would be an appropriate answer and is perfectly acceptable. In the same manner, we use drip irrigation for our crops or we do not irrigate our crops. This helps answer the how question. Question one, what is the source of irrigation water? At that time, you're gonna provide a response, so yes, and then give your detailed response in the box provided. We use pond water for irrigation or we use municipal water for irrigating our greenhouses, whatever is specific to your farm. Question two, how are crops irrigated? In this section, you're going to provide the answer, yes, and then you're going to explain. We do not irrigate our crops at this time, or we use drip irrigation for our crops, or if you use a combination of municipal, pond, any type of other combination of irrigation methodology, you can incorporate both of these in the same response box. Water quality risk. Each water source that you have marked on your map, DOC 4.04, .04, must have documentation related to water testing. Wells are tested annually, DOC 4.11. If they are used for potable water, they will have a present absent type of test. If they are used solely for irrigation, they will have a test that reports colony counts on generic E. coli and total coliforms. Open source water, ponds, streams, reservoirs, springs. These are tested at the beginning of the growing season. This is recorded on DOC 4.12. If you are double crop cropping during one season, it would be optimum to have to water test. Municipal water test from the municipality's website is an acceptable form of documentation if you are using municipal water for irrigation. Document DOC 4.10. In addition to water testing, an annual water quality assessment must be conducted for each water source that you have marked on your map. Question. A water quality assessment has been performed to determine the water quality used for irrigation purposes on the crop or crops being applied. 21 CFR 112.42a. Yes. And once you have provided the answer yes, you are going to note your response in the call provided. <coughs> You are also going to note that you have to have a supporting document. 
The supporting documents, you can find the numbers that correspond in the notes section. 4.10, An annual water quality assessment must be conducted for each water source on your map. You will see in the top left, this is a supporting document. Farm name and location. You can find these documents in the section DOC 4.31 and 4.32, Water Quality Risk Assessment. You must complete these three pages for each water source noted on your map. Make sure that the water source number noted on the assessment corresponds with the water source number that you have on your map. The assessment includes a variety of questions. Is this water source used for irrigation? What type of irrigation? Is backflow prevention in place? Has the water source been tested during the calendar year? Was the testing facility currently GLP certified? You will have a location to provide the name of the facility, the certificate number, and the certificate date. You will provide the water quality testing documentation in your binder. You will also use this data in page 1 and page 2 of the Water Quality Risk Assessment. Page 3 consists of risk assessment performed with visual observation and providing assessment notes. Once you have made your observations and have documented your risk in the column provided, you will go ahead and note if there are any corrective actions. In the corrective actions section, have any issues with this water source been corrected or repaired? If so, how were they solved? If you do not have any corrective measures or any repairs, it is perfectly fine to provide the answers, no issues at present or no risk observed. Perhaps during your observation, you noted that you needed a larger buffer zone between your pesticide storage area and your field production area. Any corrective measure such as that is perfectly fine to write the details in this location. This shows the auditor that you have observed any risk you have corrected them and you have made the proper documentation and this has become a part of your plan of action manual. If you are unsure how to respond to any of these questions, please feel free to reach out to your local extension agent with Morris or Robin Robbins at Appalachian Harvest. What are quality risk? 1.4. A water quality assessment has been performed to determine the water quality used for chemical application or fertigation is approved. 21 CFR 112.42a. Your same water quality assessments used for irrigation water will satisfy this question also. You may or may not need to include an SOP for shocking your spray water tank when it comes to the origination of a non-potable water source. For this example provided here, the answer is yes. Water used for filling spray tanks is being treated as per SOP for shocking spray water source. That can be found in your Plan of Action Manual as a document, Section 2.01, 2.02, 2.03, 2.04, 2.05, 2.06, 2.07, 2.08, 2.09, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 
and then your risk assessment, 4.31, 4.32. What are quality risk? If necessary, steps are taken to protect irrigation water from potential direct and non-point source contamination. 21 CFR 112.42 BCD. Numerous good agriculture practices can work for this response. Livestock fencing, riparian buffers, trees, shrubs, sod buffers, management practices such as pasture rotation and mowing, wellhead management, and other. These answers must be customized to your own farm. Utilizing your map and utilizing your water quality risk assessment will help you to answer this question properly. For example, on my own farm, I use a 35 foot natural grass buffer zone to protect irrigation water from potential contamination. So therefore, I would circle yes and write my explanation in the box provided. I would also reference that my farm map in 4.04 .04 will also demonstrate the buffer zone that has been employed to prevent contamination. Sewage treatment. Question. The farm sewage treatment system or septic system is functioning properly and there is no evidence of leaking or runoff. A simple statement will answer this question. If repairs or upgrades have been made, note them in your response. Know that drain fields may be inspected during the time of your inspection. For this response, I'm going to circle yes. The farm sewage treatment is known to be functioning properly and there is no evidence of leaking or runoff. I can note here that in 4.04 .04, that the septic system or sewage treatment area has been marked on my field map. Sewage treatment. 1-7. There is no municipal slash commercial sewage treatment facility or waste material landfill adjacent to the farm. Rarely does this question affect a farm, but if it does, do you monitor for problems? Are there adequate buffers established? And what is the relationship to the agriculture water? Since this is such a rare case, on my farm, I'm going to circle yes, and I'm going to provide the answer in the block. Additionally, there is no municipal commercial sewage treatment facility adjacent to the farm. I could also elaborate and say, there are no waste material landfills adjacent to the farm. Animals, wildlife, and livestock. 1-8. Question. Crop production areas are not located near or adjacent to dairy, livestock, or fowl production facilities unless adequate barriers exist. Some of the good agricultural practices that might address livestock proximity are as follows. Adequate fencing is in place and checked regularly. Sod buffers exist to filter any possible runoff. As noted in RCS, 30 meters will filter 90% of the sediments of runoff. Food crop production areas are located at a higher elevation than our livestock areas. Adjoining grass areas used for hay or other crops then are rotated with livestock after the harvest of the food crop. 
This question has been a problem in the past, as some auditors see things differently than others. The question was edited to add, unless adequate barriers exist. So this issue has improved. Nevertheless, make sure you address this as best you can. Unless adequate barriers exist, you are ensuring that crop production areas are not located near or adjacent to. So therefore, you can circle yes. Then you can provide your good agriculture practices that you use as a preventative measure in your response box. Responses may vary. Nevertheless, make sure you ad address this as best you can. It's always good when in doubt to contact your local extension agent or with Morris to have support on answering this question. If your response notes that you have provided the adequate barriers because there is a risk, you can reference your field map in the notes section 4.04. Still on animals, wildlife, and livestock, 1-9, manure lagoons located near or adjacent to crop production are maintained to prevent leaking or overflowing, or measures have been taken to stop runoff from contaminating the crop production areas. Rarely does this question enter the farm operation unless enterprises include both fruit and vegetable production along with dairy or large livestock feedlots. This is referring to liquid manure handling and storage facilities. Your main practices will include proper construction, buffer zones, and distance between various cropping operations. If this does not apply to you, then your answer will be this question does not apply to our farming operation. You will make note of your response in the block provided. Continuing with animal, wildlife, and livestock section 1-10. Manure stored near or adjacent to crop production areas is contained to prevent contamination of crops. Some good agricultural practices that address stored manure are as followed. Covered storage in a barn or a shed. Tarp covering on a concrete pad. The location is below the elevation where the crops are grown. Stockpiled and overseeded with a cover crop such as winter rye to reduce runoff. So yes, you are taking preventative measures and you will answer what preventative measures that you are utilizing in the box provided. However, the answer to your question could also be, this question does not apply to our farming operation. Continuing with animals, wildlife, and livestock. 1-11. Measures are taken to restrict access of livestock to the source or delivery system of crop irrigation water. Ponds or reservoirs are fenced to keep livestock out. Wellheads are located to avoid livestock access. Livestock are fenced out of streams. Watering systems for livestock are located away from streams. Also, if this not, does not apply to you, then your answer will be, this question does not apply to our farming operation. So to answer the question, measures are taken to restrict access. Yes, they are. And then you would provide the practice that you use to restrict the access in the box provided. However, 
you could also provide the answer that this question does not apply to our farming operation. Therefore, measures are taken to restrict the access because it does not apply. You guessed it. Animals, wildlife, and livestock. 1-12. Crop production areas are monitored for the presence or signs of wild or domestic animals entering the land. Be specific as to how you monitor for wild or domestic animals. For example, weekly, twice per week, or daily. Write it down. If you did not write it down, it did not happen. You can use a record sheet document DOC 3.27 or the margins in your spray record book DOC 6.01 or a wall calendar to demonstrate that you have a monitoring system in place and you are either doing it weekly, twice per week, or daily. Make sure you scout for damage, such as tracks or feces. Scout for this before you harvest. Then decide about quarantine if any discoveries are made. To answer this question, you are going to circle yes. All fields are monitored. Provide the answer that you're going to use weekly, twice per week, or daily during the production season for unauthorized entry of wildlife or domestic animals to the fields. This is going to be noted as a record in your plan of action manual. And you will note here that you have three choices on where that record can be found. Animals, Wildlife, and Livestock Measures are taken to reduce the opportunity for wild and or domestic animals to enter crop production areas. Any effort to reduce this opportunity for wild or domestic animal intrusion is acceptable as long as it is legal. You may respond, we allow hunting on our farm, we use deer fencing, we allow trapping, we use night eyes. If you use kill permits, request them before any hunting season. Keep them available in your manual, DOC 4.19. There is no perfect answer for wildlife control. The only way to lose points on your audit is to do nothing. For example, you're going to answer that measures are taken to reduce this opportunity. So yes, measures are taken. Then you utilize the box provided to detail what measures are taken in order to prohibit domestic and wildlife intrusion in your crop production areas. You will provide the record and it can be found in this section of your manual. Again, the only way to lose points on this question is to do nothing. Animal-based soil amendments and municipal biosolids. There are three options provided on this document. Even if you use raw manure or compost in your farming operation, we are going to check option C. Move through option A and B down to option C. You are only answering the question for option C. If you choose to follow this, do not answer any of the questions pertaining to option A or option B as this will cause for miscalculations. Animal-based soil amendments and municipal biosolids. Note, this is a continuation from the previous page. Option C, no animal-based soil amendments slash biosolids are used. 1-22, question, no animal-based soil amendments or municipal biosolids are used. 
Keyword in option C is current. This is meant that no manure or compost is being used while the current food crop is being grown. You will have good agricultural practice options in your supporting documents, DOC 2.15, that includes organic amendments. Note, under the Food Safety Modernization Act, no biosolids are used in food crop production. So to respond to this question, yes, and then you're going to provide your detailed response here in a complete sentence. This farm does not use animal-based manure or municipal biosolids on any current food crop production areas of this farm. You will note that this is a policy of the farm and this policy can be found at 2.15. Again, make sure that you note that under the Food Safety Modernization Act, no biosolids are used in food crop production. This is prohibited. Animal-based soil amendments and municipal biosolids continued. On the left, you will see a standard operating procedure. The title of this procedure is Proper Use Slash Disposal of Farm-Based Manures or Biosolids. This is a very helpful template to help you navigate through this process so that your farm can be compliant. On the top left, you will note the farm name and location on down the effective date, reviewed by the name of your GAP coordinator and the date. From there, you will pick option one, option two, or option three, whichever option applies to your farm. In all options, no biosolids will be used in our food cropping system or activities. We've provided some additional notes. Neither manures or compost will benefit crops until they begin to decompose and release nutrients. This is meant that they must be incorporated into the existing soil. Manures will lose 45 to 48% of their nutrient value if not incorporated into the soil within 72 hours after application. Manures and compost are not the same as mulch. If left on the surface, bacteria can splash onto the edible part of the food crop. Soils. Question 1-32. A previous land use assessment has been performed. Keyword here in your answer is used for agriculture production. Land use assessments may be conducted by deed search, court, or tax records, or by statement. Assignment DOC 4.15, Farm Historical Background as expressed by deed, court, record, or the owner's statement. You can write a short paragraph that describes your farm's history and ownership, how long it has been in the family, how it was handed down through the family, how parcels were purchased and or added by lease or rental. Your last sentence should state that while this farm has been in our family, it has been used for agriculture production. So back to 1.23, a previous land use assessment has been performed. Yes. Since I have responded yes, I'm going to put my response in the block provided. An example would be, this farm has been in the possession of your family's name in the excess of 
X amount of years and has been used for agriculture production. Then you reference that this is a record in your plan of action manual and then you will note that it is located in the record area under 4.15. Again, your last sentence should state, while this farm has been in our family, it has been used for agriculture production. Soils continued. 1-24. When previous land use history indicates a possibility of contamination, preventative measures have been taken to mitigate the known risk and soils have been tested for contaminants. The land use is appropriate with the test results provided. Since you have stated previously that this farm has been used for agricultural production, then it would not be indicated that you have contamination. Your response will say, since this farm has been used for agricultural production since we have owned it, then this question does not apply to our farming operation. So, when land use history indicates contamination, preventative measures have been taken. Yes, they have been taken because since we have owned this farm and it has been under our management, we have used it for agricultural production. That response would go into the box provided. It is a record and then you would be able to find that record in 4.17 of your plan of action manual. Soils continued, 1-25. Crop production areas that have been subjected to flooding are tested for potential microbial hazards. There are two types of flooding. The first one is more typical and occurs after a heavy downpour when fields become saturated and water pools up on the soil surface, but it returns to normal in a short period of time. This type of flooding can reduce yields and even kill your plants, but usually will not result in contamination of produce with human pathogens. If this is applicable to your farming operation, your statement might read, we have not observed sustained flooding since we have been farming at this location. <clears throat> the second type of flooding is more severe and occurs when water or runoff from surface waters such as rivers, lakes, or streams overflow and run into field and production areas. Flood waters as described here are likely to contain chemical and biological contaminants that may be harmful to human health and the health of animals. If the second definition is applicable to your farm, then yes, we would recommend that you have your soil tested for potential microbial hazards. When the soil tests have returned, it will determine whether you have had impact from biological and or chemical contaminants and or have not received any negative impact. You would write your response in the section provided on your document. You would also provide the record of the test and you would keep it on file in 3.11 or 4.22 in your plan of action manual. Traceability 1-26 Each production area is identified or coded to enable traceability in the event of a recall. This question refers to the part of your traceability plan that was created in earlier activities. Your farm map, DOC 4.04, shows this information. You also have your production fields listed on your traceability plan DOC 5.03. Good agricultural practices include marking your fields in order to avoid confusion 
for your workers. So the question, each production area is identified or coded to enable traceability in the event of a recall. Yes. In your re response, based on NRCS or aerial photos 4.04, all fields have been assigned a two-digit traceability code to be used to assign the lot number of products. This is noted as a record in your plan of action manual and can be found in 2.16 and 5.03. So let's have a quick review as to what we discussed when answering farm review questions. Audit questions on the left column. Answer the question, but do not add more information than needed. Let your supporting documents listed in the notes section on the right do the explanation. Respond in the middle column. Think. This is how we do it on our farm. We have provided you with generic suggestions in the boxes. However, edit these to reflect exactly what you do on your farm. The auditor wants to see what you are doing. This is your living document. Update it as needed. Again, we have questions in the first column. Once you ask yourself the question and you answer it, you are then going to provide your written response in the column provided. Again, answer the question but do not add more information than what is needed. The document section, you're going to make sure that you provide the proper document that gives the explanation for the answer you have provided. And the notes section is where you can make notes as to where these documents can be found in your plan of action manual. Again, Make sure you customize this plan of action manual to reflect what you do on your farm. I certainly appreciate your kindness and your attention to this presentation. Are there any questions at this time? Participants may not have questions at this time, but you may think of questions later. So please feel free to reach out and contact with Morris with AgCon or Robin Robbins at Appalachian Harvest. Thank you.